Hey, what's going on, U.S. History Kids? <clears throat> Today, we're going to be uh, talking about a pretty serious topic here in our video, in our lecture, the Holocaust. Um, you've probably heard about this before. Hopefully, you've learned about this in world history. So this will mostly serve as a reminder. Um, but this is what we're going to be talking about today. Make sure you watch this video and obviously do the homework assignment that corresponds with it as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the Holocaust. Uh, this is a term that is used to describe the period of time from 1933 to 1945 in which Nazi Germany carried out <clears throat> the mass imprisonments and ultimately the mass murders of uh, primarily Jewish um, Europeans, whether they were from Germany, Poland, other places that Nazi Germany had conquered during World War II, uh, Jewish people in Europe were rounded up, uh, they were sent to camps, and they were killed. Um, there are also around another 11 million just Polish communists, physically and mentally ill, gypsies, homosexuals, who were killed as well. Um, essentially anyone, again, who did not fit the Adolf Hitler Aryan dream profile. And these were the most targeted individuals of the um the holocaust but again when, when we say holocaust we mostly refer to it as a primarily uh, an affliction against the jews and it's considered to be the worst human atrocity in recent modern history so let's kind of give you some context <clears throat> jews have always been targeted and really blamed for world problems forever um for thousands of years um and in pre-World War II Germany, before like Adolf Hitler came to power, um, you know, they were blamed for the economic crisis. They were blamed as the reason why Germans lost World War I. So there's already just a lot of general hate towards Jews. Um, there was a, a few laws that were passed early on when Hitler came to power that really targeted the Jews, uh, the Nuremberg Laws prevented Jews and Germans from uh, marrying or having intercourse. They also deprived Jews of being German citizens. Um, this slowly um, began to kind of start the demise of the, uh, of the Jewish people in Germany and, and, and in Europe. You can see in that newspaper, this is be like from a, um, it even says like threatens other steps to solve the race problem. Hitler and <clears throat> Nazi officials believe that Jews really need to be taken care of. Some other big events, <clears throat> including Kristallnacht. That uh, translates to the night of broken glass. Earlier in the day, a German diplomat, diplomat was assassinated by a German Jew. And the <clears throat> entire country of Germany um, took offense to this. And that night, Jewish businesses, homes, synagogues, which are places of worship, um, were destroyed. And it's called the Night of Broken Glass because the glass windows and whatnot were broken into. And this happened across Germany this night. Uh, and this was really another big escalating step in violence against Jews. Um, so let's keep going. <clears throat> Soon after these events, the Jews were taken to places known as ghettos. Uh, it's not the ghetto that you and I would think of. Um, when we say ghetto, we think of rougher areas in maybe America or something, right? But World War II Germany, if you were a Jew being in the ghetto, was being in the separated place of the city. Um, you were rounded up usually with very little um, time to get your belongings together. And then you were forced to pretty much live in these really tight confined spaces uh, of a city. And these areas, you know, <clears throat> were you weren't permitted to leave um, on, except for special circumstances, sometimes to work, um, food was hard to come by. Uh, you know, the conditions were poor, there was overcrowding. Um, and there's two videos that kind of depict 
life in the ghetto um, and generally across the lands that Nazi Germany had conquered, Jewish people uh, were treated horribly. German soldiers could kill, you know, a Jew, Jew for any reason. Uh, you know, they often tortured, <clears throat> would rape the women and children. And this just went on for years and years. Um, in these ghettos and in other places across Europe. You can watch those two videos again that, that depict life in the ghetto. Normally I would show you them in class, but unfortunately we don't have time. Another thing too that was going on around this time is Jews in Germany and, and in the conquered lands had to wear the Star of David. So that star right there, that's what that's called. Uh, it's kind of like the thing of like when we think of a cross, we think of Christianity. When we think of <clears throat> Judaism, we think of the Star of David. And so Jews were forced to wear like a star um, to identify themselves as Jews. Eventually, though, the ghettos weren't enough. It wasn't enough for Hitler. It wasn't enough for Nazi Germany. <clears throat> and so Hitler came up with the idea for the final solution on what to do with the Jews in Europe. There were different ideas. Do we send them somewhere? Where, do, where you know, can we imprison them forever? There was one idea to send them to Madagascar. It was called like a, the Madagascar plan. Uh, in Germany's grand vision of world domination, they were going to conquer Africa and then they would just send the Jews to Madagascar and they would have to survive and fend for themselves. Um, but eventually the easiest thing in the Nazis' minds uh, was to murder all the Jewish people in Europe and eventually the world and really wipe out all Jewish bloodlines. That was their goal. And so eventually the ghettos is, you know, across all the big cities, <clears throat> where all the Jewish people were located pretty much, eventually became liquidated. And what that means is people were rounded up. Oftentimes there were, there were mass executions. Uh, a lot of people were then sent to the train station in town. They'd be put in these cattle cars that were very tight, confines, hot, very little room for breathing packed to the gills and they were sent to camps, um, concentration and death camps across Europe. And I'm gonna get to that in a bit, um, where eventually they would either be worked to death or they would just be experimented on and maybe they die or they'd be killed. This is the final solution. This shows you a list of concentration camps and death camps. Notice how, um, and to, to, under, <clears throat> to understand the difference, a concentration camp is like a forced prison work camp. The goal there is to just work the Jews essentially to death. That's all the uh, green uh, squares that you see. Most of them were located in proper Germany. Now you start going east, you notice that that changes. And all of a sudden there are places that we would call as death camps found across Poland, which is the neighboring country to Germany. But Germany had occupied Poland at this time. Germany chose to set up its death camps in Poland for a couple of reasons. One, a lot of Jews were in the Polish region and there were also a lot of Poles that were sent to death so it made a lot of logistical sense. But there was also to kind of try and keep distance from these death camps from the German people so that they're not witnessing what's going on. Um, the reality is though, most German people knew what was happening and they were complicit in the concentration camps, in the treatment of Jews, in the death camps. Those who spoke up were imprisoned. Those who didn't speak up didn't because they were afraid. But overwhelming a majority of Germans knew what was going on. The death camps, it's pretty straightforward. People were sent there and they were sent to die. That's where they'd go and they'd be usually gassed to death in really large bathhouses. Um, and, uh, you know, again, they'd be stripped down, shaved, all their possessions taken, um, <clears throat> and, uh, 
they'd be put in these bathhouses, right? And there'd be a toxic gas that eventually would, you know, either suffocate them, kill them somehow. They would then, the bodies would be burnt. Uh, and then the next group of people would come in and the cycle repeated and repeated. Some of the most famous camps include Auschwitz, Birkenau, Treblinka, uh, just to name a few. The image on the left is where the Treblinka camp is. Um, I'll show you on the class when we have a discussion about it more on Monday and Tuesday. Um, and then the, the camp on the right is a picture of Auschwitz-Birkenau, uh, the gate into Auschwitz-Birkenau, which is actually still there today. The, that roughly translates into work will set you free. That's what that means. That's what usually was the last thing that uh, a lot of uh, people who went to that camp ever read or saw. Finally, though, as the war ended, the camps were liberated. Um, I need to fix that typo. It should be Nazi, N-A-Z-I. Um, as the war ended and German defeat was imminent, uh, orders were given to essentially vacate the camps and retreat. Um, but instead of releasing the prisoners, the camps and the guards, as they left, locked the prisoners in without food and water, hoping that maybe it would take the Allied soldiers long enough to where they wouldn't be able to find the camps in time. And these people would either starve or be, you know, run out of water and die of dehydration. Um, the Allied soldiers were obviously horrified when they found the camps. And for many, their arrival had been a little too late. Um, there's a video I've included before from a very good series that eh, if you got the time, if you're into this type of stuff, it's called Band of Brothers. It's a pretty fire show. It's like 10 episodes, about 15 minutes to an hour long. Uh, one of the episodes, it kind of follows the course of World War II, but um, the scene that I've included depicts U.S. soldiers freeing a concentration camp. And you can see just how um, emaciated and sickly and uh, how these people look when the, when the U.S. soldiers get there. Which kind of leads us to a <clears throat> hotly debated question in history. Did the Allies in the world know about the camps even you know before they were able to defeat Germany? There's, mixed, uh, there's a mixed consensus. Um, you ask one historian, they might vehemently say the Allies absolutely knew. Uh, if you ask another historian, you know, they might say that the evidence isn't very clear. So I can't give you a, a good answer myself without being a true expert on the Holocaust and whatnot. But uh, from what I have gathered um, through my research is that it's unclear whether or not the Allied nations knew. Obviously, in the pre-internet and satellite age, right, information doesn't flow as freely. There were no phones, right, and no satellite imaging. Um, and of course, Germany was tight-lipped uh, and didn't really let on about what was going on. A lot of Jews obviously fled Europe um, from the stories that they heard. And even before that, from the Nuremberg laws, the ghetto, the Jewish ghettos, just how Jews were treated in the buildup to the rise of Hitler anyways. Um, and of course, they might tell stories to government officials. And but again, not a lot of people are A, going to believe immigrants, unfortunately. And again, no clear evidence. They couldn't locate exactly where the camps, they weren't exactly sure what was going on the camps. They heard from a friend who heard from a cousin, stuff like that. Um, so historians have debated this for decades and uh, there's still not really a clear answer on this. So more research needs to be done by historians for us to know, believe it or not. In the end, um, many of the individuals who participated <clears throat> at the highest levels in setting up and executing the Holocaust were ultimately sent to prison or they were executed for their actions in the war and in the treatment of Jews and other people killed in the Holocaust. The court was made up of allied judges from around the world. In total, 24 of the highest ranking Nazi officials who were still alive at this time were tried. Um, 
11 ended up being executed um, with many others either committing suicide or being jailed forever. Um, and these are some of the people that were very close to Hitler, including some of his right hand men, right hand men, um, those who, uh, you know, were captured after the war. Other people were uh, people who were maybe people who ran the camps. Um, and again, begs the question, um, you know, why didn't the German people, why didn't they stand up? And that's a question that we're going to have to have more discussion about and more homework assignment work on to think about. Um, I highly, highly recommend, and if you've gotten this far in the video, good news for you, you've found a little secret. If you watch this movie, Schindler's List, I'll give you 40 points, extra credits. Uh, honestly, it's a film you just need to watch to become, I think, a better human. It, you need to watch this film. Um, directed by Steven Spielberg, the same guy who did Saving Private Ryan. If you liked kind of that opening scene, um, you'll like this film. It was on Netflix for a while. Um, again, y'all are smart. You can probably find it online. Um, won a bunch of awards. One of the better, best films of all time. Um, but again, if you watch it, give me like a 200-word write-up. Um, I'll give you 40 points extra credit. So let me know. Hopefully you've gotten to this video and you know what's up. Um, <clears throat> with that being said, be prepared for more of a discussion about this in our next class. Um, thanks for following me along. Make sure to do your homework assignment and I will talk to y'all later. Take care.